Welcome to this episode of The Green Economy. Which is all about hydropower, very green source of energy. But also, in addition to that, we are celebrating the end of our first season here at The Green Economy, which means we have completed, Don, 26, 26 shows. And Andrew, we finally get to go on our cruise up to Columbia, which this I is, promised you. This is our treat. That's right. Our director and producers have promised us a couple of days of absolute deliciousness on the river. So we're here to find the boat. And here's our boat. Look at that. I'm not going in that, Don. Why not, not, Andrew? It's, not it's a beautiful way. boat. We're going to have a great time. You wouldn't get many people in that, Don. No, that. <sighs> yes, that's our boat. Hey, hey oh, good yeah. seeing you, both of you. Hey, hey before Captain. we get started, we wanted to go through a couple of rules here. Mm -hmm. Number one, yeah. no horseplay. Ah, that's you. Yeah. The other thing, we need to wear life jackets. Anytime mm -hmm. we're out on, on, on the front of the boat or any place exposed to the water, we must wear life jackets. Not a problem for me. Is there a place to sunbathe? Well, yes, there is, and we can work on that later, too. No, but the think about it. If you're wearing a life jacket, how are you going to sunbathe? Well, you just well, you have lines. You have tan lines. Come on. Are we ready to go? Let's get this party yeah, let's going. Let's go. The Columbia River is an incredible resource for water, hydropower, and as a shipping waterway. This 1,243 mile long river has its start in the Canadian Rockies. Its drainage basin is huge covering over 258,000 square miles. It has a staggering average flow of 265,000 cubic feet of water per second. The Columbia has a rich history. Much of the geology we see today was formed by the Masula Flood, a giant gully wash from massive lakes at the end of the Ice Age, farther east in Montana. The earliest humans to utilize the Columbia as a resource were the early American Indians. Then, in 1804, Lewis and Clark navigated the Columbia when exploring the West. But the utilization of dams on the Columbia didn't occur until the 1930s when America experienced the Great Depression. President Franklin Roosevelt enacted the New Deal, putting unemployed people back in the workplace. The Bonneville and Grand Coulee dams were designed and construction began in 1934, employing 3,000 workers non-stop in eight-hour shifts. In record time, Bonneville was finished in 1937, complete with a powerhouse, spillways and navigation locks. Not only did the dam generate power, but allowed shipping navigation. The dams also enabled irrigation for farmers, turning the Columbia Basin from a desert into fertile farmlands. 